Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Mark Sievers, and today I'm gonna show you how to make dinner party potato waffles. So, I don't have a lot of small kitchen gadgets and specialty pans and things in my kitchen. I really try to use just really basic, ordinary kitchen equipment. And a waffle maker is something that I do have because Ryan loves when I make him waffles on the weekends. Not all the time, but you know, a couple times a month. And I thought, what else can I do with my waffle maker? What else can I make that just goes a little bit beyond the idea of a breakfast item, but make something super earthy, super elegant, but still really simple. And I came up with my recipe for dinner party potato waffles. I love this recipe because it is essentially like making kind of like a hash brown waffle, but of course I couldn't just put regular potatoes and a little bit of salt and pepper. I needed to make them a little bit more elevated and really full of flavor. So I have everything's kind of in process because I wanna show you how you can do some steps ahead of time before your dinner party because essentially we are gonna create a waffle, a caramelized onion base that goes inside of the potatoes and then also a spicy apple and ginger compote. So let's go back into the kitchen and see where I am mid process because I wanna show you really how simple it is to make these and how you can make some of the components ahead of time. So right now I have my caramelized onions and I'm just gonna do the finishing touches in a couple minutes here. I have, I pre-did the onions actually yesterday and I just put them into the refrigerator and I'm gonna show you how I finish them. And I also have this gorgeous apple compote and that seems to be ready. So the apple compote really is simple. This is just some Braeburn apples and some honey and some butter, salt and pepper and a few other ingredients. And I just really let it just cook down. And then as soon as those apples were nice and tender, I added some minced crystallized ginger, mashed it with a fork, and now I'm gonna add a little bit of fresh parsley. And don't worry, all of these measurements for the full written recipe are at marksievers.com. But I just wanted to take you through how simple this is. I actually made the compote three days ago and just left it into the refrigerator. And I'm just warming it up before I, because I want this nice warm compote to be with the waffles. And then now I'm going to add my tablespoon of fresh parsley and give this a stir. And that's it. You have the most beautiful caramelized apples with honey, crystallized ginger, and then that really beautiful hit of fresh parsley. It's delicious. You can also serve it Really, you can make a larger batch and serve it as a side dish if you're serving, um, maybe gonna make some uh, vegetable kebabs or it's even really fabulous with cheese. So let's turn the heat off of that. And let's see what I have going on up here. So here I have some caramelized onions. And this is basically just a red onion, a yellow onion, some butter, some olive oil, salt and pepper. And I've let them Kind of caramelized for about eh, 30 minutes or so and they take on the most delicious flavor but we're going to add more flavor i have some fresh thyme and some garlic i'm going to add that into these onions now and of course you could do these last couple steps also ahead of time but i just wanted to show you kind of how to finish off these beautiful onions Oh, that thyme and garlic, as soon as it hits the hot pan, is really lovely, especially with caramelized onions. I love caramelized onions and I love keeping, sometimes I keep a container of them in the refrigerator because they're great on top of a French omelet. They're great inside of pasta. And again, you can serve them in a beautiful silver bowl with some cheese. So, but to give these onions even better flavor, we're going to add a little bit of this gorgeous Louis Jadot Chardonnay. I always reduce my onions with a little bit of wine 
about a half a cup and I make sure it's something that's I can drink as well. So I'm gonna serve, well, who am I kidding? I'm just gonna drink the rest of the bottle after I'm done with this video. <laughs> as Ryan and I enjoy these gorgeous dinner party potato waffles. So now I'm just gonna let this reduce. This takes about five to seven minutes over medium low heat. I'm just gonna get my timer here and we're gonna go start on the potatoes because that really is kind of like the trickiest part even though it's really simple. But we're just gonna let those cook away. So for the potatoes, I have one and a half pounds of russet potatoes and a half a pound of Yukon gold potatoes that I've just grated on the large holes of a standard box grater. You know, the kind that our grandmothers used to have. And I've rinsed them under cold water, put them in a bowl, stirred them around, get all of that excess starch out. And now it's time to get all of the excess moisture out. And this is the really crazy part of how much moisture is in potatoes. So this is just my grated potatoes. And I'm just gonna put them into this little tea towel. And I'm doing it over this bowl so you can see how much water actually comes out of these potatoes. These have been draining in that colander for about two hours. And there's still so much moisture. Taking out all this excess moisture is gonna help get these waffles to be nice and crispy. I like my recipe for these because they have a crispy exterior, but they're still really beautiful and kind of tender inside. Then I'm gonna open up this little tea towel again. I'm just gonna give them a toss, just like that. It's a messy job, but you can also do this part ahead of time too, so you're not doing this in the kitchen while all of your guests are sitting at the table with their forks and knives saying, feed me, feed me. <laughs> or in this case, Ryan. <laughs> so this just makes sure I'm getting all of this moisture out. Isn't that amazing though, how much moisture comes out of this? Okay, so I'm just gonna set that aside and let's go check on our onions. So I can smell them cooking away. And the idea, once I add the wine, is I just wanna kind of let it reduce. I wanna scrape up all those beautiful brown bits that are at the bottom of the pan. And these are almost done. So I'm gonna let them cook for a few more minutes because they're, they're still a little too liquidy. So let's take this big bowl and I'm gonna put in my potatoes. Put that aside. And then to this, I'm gonna add about a teaspoon and a half of salt. Make sure they're really well seasoned. Some pepper. And remember, all of these measurements with the full written recipe for the potatoes, the caramelized onions, and the compote are all available at marksievers.com. I'll put the link in the description box right below. But I just wanna show you how easy these do actually come together. And I'm gonna put in a beaten egg, one extra large egg. Et voila, just like that. And then I have about a half a cup of panko bread flakes, just like a Japanese breadcrumb. Just like this. Eh, a little bit extra won't hurt. <laughs> and then a half a cup of freshly grated Gruyere cheese. I mean, I've never known Gruyere to make anything worse. <laughs> Only better. So I can smell those onions. So let's get our final look at these gorgeous onions. Ugh, these look perfect. So they're nicely caramelized. They smell like wine and garlic and thyme. And I mean, quite frankly, you could eat them at this point with a spoon and they'd be really delicious. Turn my timer off and now we're gonna add these to Turn off the heat. 
and we're going to add these to this big bowl of other ingredients. Just going to give it a stir. Mm. And then add in all of this gorgeous, oh, can you hear them sizzle? Mm -hmm. All of the, any extra liquid, all of the browned bits, just like that. This is gonna be so good. Give them a stir. Get this all really well incorporated. I mean, it's really, really simple. But, you know, there is a few different recipes that go into the final dish. So I think it's really nice that I can do the apple compote a few days ahead of time. I would just do that again without putting in the parsley right when I'm getting ready to warm it up, add in that fresh parsley. I can do the caramelized onions really four or five days ahead of time. And then maybe the afternoon before I'm getting ready to serve these, just have the potatoes in water, all the water's clear, wring them out, and then just start assembling. So let me clean off my island here, and let me show you how this fairly, it smells delicious, but it's still kind of unassuming, how this beautiful mixture turns into my dinner party potato waffles. So I'm gonna set that aside and get cleaned up. All right, I've got my warm apple compote. So now let's go and start assembling these delicious dinner party potato waffles. So I have just a standard four section waffle maker set to medium and I'm letting that get nice and hot. I'm gonna pour myself a little bit of wine because every cook should have a little wine. This is the same Louis Jadot Chardonnay that I caramelized the onions with. So, saute, take a little sip. So good. And then I have some creme fraiche, and then I have some fresh chives. And I'm just gonna let this get nice and hot. I have a little quarter cup scoop here. And as soon as this is nice and warm, we're gonna start making our waffles. But in the meantime, I'm gonna have a few sips of wine. Mm. <laughs> so my waffle maker is nice and hot, it's preheated. And let me show you exactly how to do this overhead. So all I'm gonna do is lift up my waffle maker and put a big heaping, I mean really heaping, quarter cup of filling of this potato right in the center. And I'm not folding it down or pressing it down. I'm gonna let the waffle iron do that itself. So this is probably about a half a cup total, but I find that doing it in the quarter cup measure is just a little bit easier. And now, I'm gonna close the lid. Ooh, hear that? And that's gonna cook for about five to seven minutes. It all depends on your waffle iron. You want the outside to be nice and golden. Of course, you want them to be cooked. And I have my oven set to about 250 degrees, so that when I make these four, I can put these into the oven, keep them warm, make the other four, and then we're done. But again, I love this pastime of I have to wait for the waffles to cook. So I'll have a few more sips of wine. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> okay, so my last four are almost done. And I just wanna get some chives ready because I, of course, I'm gonna have a little bite when these are last four are finished. So just some chives, no more complicated than that. My apple compote with ginger is still nice and warm. My creme fraiche is ready. Gorgeous Chardonnay, still in the pitcher. And I have some plates. So these waffles, because of the size of them, they're not gonna fill the entire section of the waffle maker. 
These I would say are more the size of like a liege waffle. They're about, I don't know, four inches or so in diameter. And I think they're serves, really makes about eight. So you can make all eight and serve them as a first course for a larger dinner party, or you can serve them single or double them up for main course. And that's what I'm gonna do for Ryan and I tonight. So these look so delicious. So these look perfectly cooked. And let's see, I'm just gonna lift them out and perfectly cooked, there you go. So look at how gorgeous these are. The caramelized onions inside really do give them so much flavor. I guess I should get Ryan's plate ready too. And I love this because it really takes such simple ingredients like potatoes and onions and really does make them dinner party worthy. This also would make a lovely lunch. So let's move this to the side. So now let's get serious. Let's get down to business. So I'm gonna put on a little bit of the apple compote, just like this, to each one or to each plate. But you can see if you were having a dinner party, if you presented these at the table, people I think will love them. They'll go crazy. Little bit of creme fraiche, not too much. A couple little dollops. You can't find creme fraiche, cream cheese will do just fine. This is kind of like the cousin or like the sister of potato pancakes. Latkes, really. Just a little bit different. And then a little sprinkling of some fresh chives. Perfect. I love when chives get all over the plate too. I think it looks really great. And then the most important part, the tasting. So these are gonna be really hot, but I will take one for the team. So, oh, they're so delicious. A Little bit of sour cream, a little bit of apple compote. Oh. Mm. I'm telling you, the perfectly crisp potatoes, delicious white wine caramelized onions, that spicy ginger and the apple compote, nice creme fraiche, a little bit of chive. That is an absolutely stellar recipe. I might even go as far as saying it's maybe one of the top 10 things, favorites I've ever created. Let me give it another bite. Mm. That little bit of Yukon gold potato in the grated potato mixture really adds so much fullness and body. This is fantastic. Ryan is gonna be one happy little camper. So I hope you liked this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe to my channel and hit the little notification bell so you're notified of new videos as soon as they post. Head over to marksievers.com for this full written recipe as well as many, many others. And until next time, I wish you a fabulous rest of your day. My day is about to get really, really good. A little French wine little dinner party potato waffles, maybe a little movie. It's a good day. <laughs> Bye guys. This recipe and more can be found on my website, markseavers.com. Thanks for watching.